Good morning, Jesus. Uh, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Nice to see you. <laughs> yes, I'm happy to see you too. Good. Good morning, Dr. Santilli. Good morning. Hi, good morning. How are you? Okay, well, uh, I think we have our usual quorum, so um, we, we might as well continue. Um, the only item uh, besides the main presentation by Dr. Santilli is. Uh, just a reminder that uh, we we have no forward looking schedule as such um, that we need to uh, decide on sort of what presentations we might want to make over the next uh, next month or or two uh, but at this point uh, my only uh, anticipation is that uh, after the presentation by dr Santilli, we may may require say another meeting mostly to discuss uh, related issues um, so we could sort of think about you know basically making the next meeting uh, uh, an open discussion meeting um, unless someone actually you know has particular material that they would like to present um, the only only thing on my part that i'm sort of anxious at some point to, to include in our meetings uh, is a discussion of the uh, uh, many worlds interpretation, uh, not the Everett interpretation of quantum mechanics, but but rather the, a many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics that arises out of David Bohm's work. Uh, so it, it in some ways it's a natural sort of follow on perhaps of what Dr. Santilli might be talking about today. Um, but I'm not quite ready to do that yet, I don't think. So, you know, in a, in a couple of weeks' time, I mean, if, if you're interested, you know, I, I'd certainly like to go in that direction. Uh, but I'm entirely open for, <laughs> for whatever else we might include. Uh, so, I, I believe that both, I believe that both, both ideas are excellent. Discussions are the very, very essence for new ideas. So, oh my God, yes, definitely yes. Also, definitely yes um, to the to the second point because the, the I, I, um, <clears throat> I think you know my, my feeling toward David Bohm and uh, consider you know the founder of my own study. Mm -hmm. So definitely um, yes, both ideas are uh, worth discussing. Okay. And uh, Dr. Sochek, I, I, I you haven't yet presented anything specifically about well uh, other than the poly matrices um, you haven't really focused on quantum mechanics uh, in the context of geometric algebra and I know there was a lot of work done by people like Chris Doran and, and so forth um, in that direction so and I I in fact that was probably the origin of my own interests in uh, uh, Clifford algebra um, so uh, you know, at some point, if, if you feel like jumping in with you know, more on that subject, I, I definitely would be interested. <clears throat> well, I, I've uh, spent some time studying quantum mechanics. I cannot say that that I am an expert at, at, in any sense of the word of quantum mechanics. I'm more, I, I did get my uh, doctorate in mathematics, not in physics. And physics is, well, my David Hestonies, of course, is a theoretical physicist, and I took Mm -hmm. all his physics courses, but uh, my degree still is in mathematics, and I was primarily interested in development, basically, of basic ideas of linear algebra and differential geometry and geometric algebra, so I'm not really an expert at all. I mean, it'd be nice if Chris Dorn or one of those guys yeah. would present <laughs> those ideas. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, I understand. Okay, well, no problem. Um, and. Uh, Jesus, uh, are you are you continuing work on uh, the notion of uh, of interaction, uh, abstract interactions? Yes, uh, of course. Uh, I like to continue with with that, and uh, maybe some of my the uh, questions that uh, I have in this field 
uh, I can uh, try to present in this view. Then, uh, 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 yes. of course, we like uh, yes. to continue. Yeah, I, yeah. I, mm. uh, again, sort of continuing our emphasis on quantum mechanics, it would be interesting to see so how to apply this more abstract view of interaction from a quantum yeah. mechanical point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, I think quantum mechanics does imply a rather different uh, perspective on interaction uh, compared, say, to relativity. So it, it would be interesting to see how that foundations can be applied in this case. Before okay. Dr. Sedili gets started, I'd like to understand better the modifications that hadronics uh, quantum mechanics makes to quantum mechanics. I don't really believe it from my point of view. I cannot see how any of the uh, entanglement at distances and all that are modified at all by uh, having an ISO uh, quantum mechanics. You still, you can still, as far as I can understand, can have entanglement over four light years away or whatever. It does not seem to affect, it. it's still basic quantum mechanic, mechanics as far as I can understand. Also, I'd like to understand Dr. Santilli's system, three different ISO units at the same time, I'm, what are the relationships between those ISO units? I've been thinking, trying to think about that and understand that idea. The problem with the quantum entanglement is that quantum mechanics provides no, no quantity, no equations that can represent the interaction of instant, instantaneous interaction at a distance. There is no, no, no equation whatsoever, none, not even one that makes no sense. Well, at least we pre we produce one, which is the, the, the overlapping of the wave packet. And, uh, and we try to represent the mathematically the, the overlapping of the wave packet. That's the, the only difference. But the birth of um, the birth, uh, also, the, also the controversy is that quantum mechanics does not predict and cannot predict this instantaneous interaction at the distance. Um, that you have you change the spin in one particle instantaneously, other particle which is in the vega region of the of the, of the sky, inverts the uh, invert the spin on one particle, the other particle of the vega region instantly inverts the spin. Well, that that some, somehow, as I understand, it, is related to the, the basic equation of entangled particles. No, there is no it does not seem to depend upon the distance between them. So that's one, why there's no. But the mechanics has no equation at all, none. If you know of any, please let me know. If you know, <laughs> at least we have any. Well, I mean, um, yeah, I don't know. We we're, we might get, be jumping into the sort of technical issues before uh, before we're quite ready to. But uh, I I think I I also would take exception to that claim, like that that entanglement is somehow built into quantum mechanics from the beginning. Um, like, um, so it's... It, How did these but, guys get but, that but idea the issue, that it was? <laughs> well, well I, I think it was a surprise that it was. Like when Einstein uh, you know, and, and Rosen and Podolsky, for example, uh, came up with that proof, it was a surprise to, to many people that, that this was such an inherent feature of quantum mechanics. But but the problem, as as uh, I'm sure Dr. Santilli is uh, intending to talk about, uh, was that Einstein, Rosen, Podolsky also demonstrated that there was no local mechanism that explained this possible connection, and and that's I think that's what you mean by there being no equation. I mean certainly that there, there is an equation. I mean Schrödinger's equation itself describes entanglement it, but, but it does not give it does not give a mechanism it does not it does not give in particular it doesn't give a local mechanism so so any description of entanglement has to involve non-locality in the sense that I, that I was trying to define it right is that it means that the dynamics have to be expressed in terms of the locations of all the particles of the system at once Independent of how far away they are, right? so that so that the that dynamics has to be written in configuration space of the particles, and and this that's just that's simply another way of saying that 
there is this non-locality uh, that's inherent in in quantum mechanics. The so, so I wouldn't say I wouldn't want to say that there's no equation, but I would I would freely admit that there is no no mechanism of the normal, you know, especially of the well, classical. Well, I think that's what stopped Einstein. He didn't see any mechanism. They were guided yes. then. Uh, yeah, but. But I, I, I'd like, rather than getting directly into the <laughs> discussion, I, I think it's time that we, we invite Dr. Santilli to, to basically continue his presentation or to, to, to give his presentation. <laughs> and uh, and al also, Dr. Santilli, if you could indicate how you would like to handle questions and comments. Uh, Just to close it with a few cycles, <clears throat> the te then the one day we have to address this, this, this issue of the entanglement. Because of course, you know, the, the whole thing begins with the idea that, that the wave function is a, is a byproduct of the wave function. The wave function is the basic notion of quantum mechanics. So in that sense, of course, quantum mechanics originated the entanglement, the conception of the entanglement. But when you go to technical issue, then, uh, then we have to see that, uh, remember that the, my biggest reservation by Einstein, that's the last sentence, was on the wave function. Is the wave function that is of quantum mechanics that cannot, uh, but with this will, um, maybe we have a separate, uh, uh, separate, separate issue. Very well. So let me see if I can, um, if I can, if I can. Um, just a moment. Um, let me see. I think it's this one. Okay. Let's see if I can manage. Yes, that that's good. Um, okay. Can you see it? Uh, can you see the? <clears throat> can you see my presentation? Yes. Yes, that's yes. perfect for me. Okay, can you hear me well? Yes. Okay. Yes, the audio is good. Well, let me let me start by uh, by uh, by answering this important question by the page. Please, this is an informal an informal um, meet. Also, what we are discussing, in my view, are important subject for the that. Uh, so, therefore, uh, discussions is absolutely essential. Please do interrupt me at any time. Any question, even if you may think that the question is not uh, important, no, don't think like that. There is no question. This is a very complex subject. So any question, and the more elemental that the question is, the, the deeper it is, in my view, and <clears throat> because it helps, uh, helps to clarify things in one way or the other. And um, <clears throat> I would like to say that um, I feel privileged today to be to be a speaker on this on those uh, topics have attracted uh, the, the most powerful scientific minds of uh, of the past century and so therefore they have, they have been fascinating to many many scientists through, through, through the years well very well so after a couple of minutes uh, what i recommend i recommend first of all to review what is the what, why so many physicists, mathematicians, theoreticians, experimentalists, and chemists have worked on harmonic mechanics? What is it? Let me just read uh, That's a, that's um. Excuse me, Dr. Santilli. Uh, for some reason, your your audio, which was perfect uh, earlier, is, is suddenly rather quiet. Uh, yeah, that, that happened to me too. Sorry. Okay, that's better. That's better. That's better. Okay now. Yes. 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 No, it's okay. <clears throat> okay now. I think so. You hear me? Hello. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> it's okay now. Yes. yes. Good. Very well. So let's remind that <clears throat> because um, at least that's what uh, the, everything essentially that I have to do is to illustrate this main objective. The, the word hadronic mechanics was uh, proposed by my wife Carla because hadron, in one of the meanings in Greek, means strong. And indeed, hadrons are all strongly interacting parts, namely particles that experience strong interaction. So hadronic mechanics mean, means the, the mechanics for strong interaction. That's the main, uh, the main objective. The, now, the foundations are uh, to, to understand, um, uh, at least for me to try to express my the foundation from a um, the basic um, the essence is the foundations are experimental, namely the namely the, the, the most important experimental information is here 
for what we have to discuss, namely that the volume of nuclei, according to experimental evidence, is smaller, repeat, smaller than the sum of the volume of the volume of the those again your uh, something happened to the audio again <laughs> hmm. yeah, yeah more distance to the microphone or who knows what, what the problem is uh, I've always found that uh, that using the speaker on the on the uh, computer uh, <clears throat> interferes with the microphone. You know, the, so uh, so I I prefer to have some kind of earphones, or I know you're using something, uh, yeah, Doctor Sochik. That's what I have. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think that helps a lot with respect to the microphone because then the uh, computer doesn't have to decide whether to transmit your voice again. <laughs> Well, there's no feedback, that's the main thing. Effectively, yes. But one thing that does help me when I'm using Zoom in, in the way with the speaker is to uh, to disable the automatic volume control, because that I don't find Zoom's automatic volume control seems to be yeah, unreliable. <laughs> No, no. Can you hear us now? No. Yes, yes. I think it's the audio is okay. Okay. <clears throat> is it normal? Or, uh, because before I could hear some water running, but I don't know. It's okay now. It's okay, okay now. You need it to hire. When you have this uh, effect of, of water running and so forth, that's usually a kind of feedback effect that that occurs between your your microphone and the speakers of your computer system. Okay, very well. So please let me know if there are additional problems. So the most important the experimental evidence is that the proton and uh, the neutrons are in condition of partial mutual penetration of their hyper. The, the magic word is here: the hyper dense. Proton and neutrons are not like um, the, the particles that put it in the quark theory. Quark, uh, quarks are points. Have to be points to apply quantum. So, uh, so proton and neutrons are spheres with, uh, with isolated points inside. No. According to the physical reality, they are extended particles of 10 to the minus 13 um, um, centimeter <clears throat> radius. And they are among the, the densest um, object that we have measured. Uh, mankind has measured until now. So, if you want, I, 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 this is the picture. If you want of the of the deuteron, namely the is a proton and the neutron, which are in partial penetration of one inside the other. And uh, so, this is the experimental method. Well, drone mechanics has been trying, trying, of course, to represent this physical reality. The consequences are the following basic axiom pertaining to interactions again i have to ask you the courtesy of um, of um, because uh, often in the in the studies you know but uh, Schrodinger and, the, and of course Heisenberg and the de Broglie etc talking about the notion of, of the individual notion of it's a what is a wave function this is not that in, you know, of course it's fundamental <clears throat> but what we are our objective is not that one no our objective is to study the interaction so everything rather than the, the, the characteristic of an individual, you know. So we are primarily interested in the interaction. So once you look at those um, basic assumptions, you come up with consequence that the interaction have to be, uh, the strong interaction have to be nonlinear, namely depending on the power of the wave function. This is a notion that goes back to the original, original uh, origin of the nuclear physics. The next consequence is a no notion of non-locality, which is different. Um, the, 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 the traditional uh, notion of non locality very nicely reviewed by Dr. Pate, on the, uh, the historical, because that's what uh, has been historic. This is some uh, different non locality, namely, the interaction depends on the volume in, uh, of an integral over the volume of our overlapping. 
this um, this is this connotation of non-locality already eliminates any of representing this type of a strong interaction in an exact way uh, or in a better way by a quantum mechanics. So quantum mechanics, the way function define at one point, the potential define at one point. Laplacian is defined one one point, and this cannot be applied to, um, to a volume that contains an infinite number of. But the most fundamental in the assumption of Adroni mechanics is that uh, that has to be kept in mind that it was, was not been you know, was not adopted by Eisen, not adopted by Berlin, not adopted by by Bohm or other preceding scientists. Is that those um, and the interaction are non-potential, namely they can that they. And cannot be derived from a potential. And the primary reason is again physical, because you see, the, think about the proton and the neutron, they are in contact with each other. They are in contact with each other, and so they had zero range by very construction. They had zero, zero range. In the moment um, the, this overlapping uh, is separated, then quantum, uh, then quantum mechanics come back uh, uniquely and identically from other mechanics. Adorno mechanics uh, that makes no sense at all. You go back, recover quantum mechanics uniquely and identical, and we believe that all beyond them to minus 13 centimeter, quantum mechanics is exactly valid. The Copenhagen interpretation, per this is our main assumption. However, when we have this interaction, quantum mechanics that is not um, provided uh, approximation, uh, nuclear power plants still work. So uh, let's remind, but it's not the final description. The theory is incomplete. But this is so in conclusion. Here is the central problem that has been we have been facing uh, for 50 years: how to represent in a mathematically a consistent way, but uh, interactions are not derivable from a potential. This mathematics did not exist. Those are the external terms in Lagrange and Hamilton's equation, as well as Hamilton Jacobi, and uh, as well at the beginning with Newton. There are the, the the part of neutral force that the variation of non self joint, namely the, other, the velocity dependent. You cannot, a force which is velocity dependent, you cannot derive it from a potential. So, conclusion the, 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 our problem is that we can represent a strong interaction with anything you want, any, the, any idea is welcome, invited, and, uh, and supported, except the use of the Hamiltonian. Because the moment you add the nonlinear term in the Hamiltonian, you implicitly assume that indeed they are, they depend from the, the interaction that they, 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 they depend on the potential. So this non-linearity was in my mind since my grad of studies and in the, the rest of Torino in the mid sixties, uh, I learned from uh, Fermi. And um, let's go back to, um, let's go back to uh, the early 70, I believe 71 or 72. And I was an associate professor of, of physics at the Boston University teaching spending most of my time in teaching of physics and mathematics and, and seminar courses, and, and, but that's another issue. But, <clears throat> but um, I, I always been a strong admirer of, of Heisenberg, of Heisenberg. So one day I decided to contact him um, because I admire the man indeed uh, significantly. Let's remember that you know, to qualify the position of the man, Heisenberg, as you well know, don't need to remember that there's uh, the founders of quantum mechanics, he was a fundamental equation and the right of the final evolution based on the algebra, the only that the discovery of the uncertainty principle, he got the Nobel Prize in um, 29, blah, blah, blah. Despite all this, here's the stature of the man. He spent <clears throat> the last part of his life in the limitations of his own work. The limitations of his own work. And in the, in the last part of the book, the nonlinear, let's call them, we're calling extension or nonlinear mechanics and so on. I have to remember, remember at this point, at least it's a rumor that I heard when I was at Boston University, Einstein papers were being um, cataloged, organized by John Stachel, a good friend of mine. And it, it, so there were a number of rumors that came out of it. But, but in essence, as you know, Eisenberg was, was, we're talking about terminology. Why Eisenberg is not considered to be a completion of quantum mechanics. The word completion is Einstein, the word of Einstein. So this goes back to the relationship between Einstein and Niels Bohr. As you know, Einstein was a student of Niels Bohr. 
And as you also know, Niels Bohr was absolutely against the completion of, of quantum mechanics. So for, for this reason, um, uh, Eisenberg did not use the word completion for his studies. But nevertheless, in, uh, the, nevertheless we, I know this from my, my graduate studies, it is admitted <clears throat> that in 1935, when, uh, when uh, the uh, Nazi unfortunately had reached the peak of, of, of the military and uh, political as well as uh, scientific power, Eisenberg did uh, agree with Einstein that, uh, that, that uh, quantum mechanics uh, it was not the final, the final, the, the final formulation of mechanics for the universe, and that's why he started uh, not, not the, the, the theory. So anyhow, I, the, I, but so, but as far as I'm concerned, I have to pay. I, I cannot dishonor uh, the name of Albert Einstein, Bodolsky, Rosen. No, for me, it started the Heisenberg nonlinear theory is a completion of quantum mechanics, exactly according to Einstein, or essentially as well. And, and is a found it's a, it's a foundation of uh, Adrani mechanics because as you will see that uh, appears everywhere. So <clears throat> one day I took the courage and as you say with all my hands and wrote a very nice letter to uh, Professor Heisenberg. First of all, praising him for his studies on modern theory, he was writing a book on his nonlinear. Not only for that, they were the, among the most important studies in nonlinearity. They are still are in my view, very very rigorous. But not only that, it was the only nonlinear theory applied to, to a spinal, to a spin, to a spin one and a half a particle. So I praised him this in a way as gentle but clearly I said I was. But then I told him that I that uh, I told him that I was interested in nonlinear studies, whether I could, could correspond him to understand you know some of the basic too. He, he reacted very quickly and in a way that really I felt confused because I was a little professor and he was a big guy, but he was so nice. He will answer the letters in a, in a few days and really touch my heart. <clears throat> and um, so uh, let's see, very, let's summarize this, uh, which is not a very long, uh, because he was right to the point. He was a scholar in his letter, was like sculptured down to the, settled down to the essence. So the first part we look at, um, the, the, we look at what, uh, what I, I have called, uh, use different term, but I've called on my part, the majet, majestic uh, axiomatic uh, structure of quantum mechanics. Majestic because it's a feature that is really sometimes unbelievable. So, <clears throat> so this is the basic equation that we assume to be valid for the Copenhagen uh, realization of quantum mechanics. And we look at the feature of this, uh, one of the features was some background noise. One of the features of, um, of quantum mechanics, which is the verification of the superposition principle, which is written here. Uh, these were studying a two body problem. Remember, I'm only interested in bound state, isolated particles. I is not, uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm not in my, in my interest at this time. Bound state with an attractive, strongly attractive force, yes. So, um, so the, there's the wave function. And the two-body system function is can be decomposed into the product of the, the wave function of the constituents. This is an absolutely trivial elementary property from a mathematical viewpoint, not so from a physical viewpoint, because this allows me to study the structure of the of the, of the hydrogen atom not only as a whole, which is the study CDC, and not only as a whole, but then we can allow me to study the individual constituents. Of hydrogen atom, namely the proton and the electrons, which are here. Then we study, we discussed also this class, uh, the, the infinite number of equivalent theory, uh, theories that are equivalent to the quantum and to this Copenhagen interpretation, which is characterized by unitary equivalence. Any unitary transformation, unitary transformation of this equation, any models is there, it is indeed, um, it is indeed, in my opinion, uh, I said, but also I believe. Uh, Namely, this quantum mechanics is no novelty, absolutely no novelty. Then, okay, and then, uh, and then after that, we pass to the, the, to the de delicate issue. The delicate issue, <coughs> the, the, um, it was the following. Here I write down the, the, uh, one of these equations, uh, in the essentially axiomatic structure, which is essentially the following. Um, Eisenberg uh, used, uh, essentially was hoping to preserve this uh, celebrated time evolution. Um, and so therefore, he had another op option than maintaining the Hamiltonian for the representation of everything. That is not only potential interaction, but also the non-linear interaction. So he essentially 
Here is this basic uh, uh, basic position is represented here by by adding a dependence on the on the, on the wave function in the Hamiltonian. <clears throat> that was, in my opinion, uh, this was a, a, an axiomatic structure of most, if not all, of Heisenberg equation, as well as Bohr. Uh, I'm sorry, not Bohr. No, Bohr was uh, against the linear theory. Um, uh, Bohm <clears throat> and a number of other highly qualified scholar. The problem, well, <clears throat> which emerged from those equations, which I discussed it with uh, with uh, with um, uh, with Heisenberg, and I was I must uh, at this point uh, kind of embarrassment I must say because I respected the man immensely and. Uh, but uh, the point was this, that uh, once you make this basic assumption, then the superposition principle is no longer verified. Again, this is a trivial mathematical property, but uh, the physical implications are serious because it prevents me from, when I want to study the deuteron, sure, I can study the deuteron as a, as a whole here, yes, but I cannot study individual constituents, the proton and the neutron. I wanted to verify uh, the fermi weisskopf hypothesis, remember my preceding lecture, that the proton and neutrons the form a member of a nuclear condition to represent nuclear magnetic moment. So basically this type of theory prevented me to do, to, to do, the, to, to do the, what I had in mind. So I felt very embarrassed and, uh, and essentially the, 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 our correspondence ended up with uh, on this property. He did not comment, I mean, no, I, I, I did not want to, uh, I, felt, uh, felt, I felt embarrassed, and, and so that our correspond, correspondence essentially ended up. I learned later that the origin of this, that when you add the origin of this problem is that when you add the, uh, the wave function to, in uh, Newtonian, and this remains the structure, mathematically remains a modular structure, it's a, it's a right module essentially, then <clears throat> with an equivalent to left module, so the right module is sufficient. <clears throat> when you have this structure for the nonlinear interaction, then you have uh, all various problems, uh, axiomatic problems. The origin is that the nonlinear interactions are not derivable from a potential. And so the, that's my personal, my personal view. Now, the, this is what I have to say here, they are confidential. There are additional problematic aspects which I did not communicate. Some of them I didn't even know. Uh, didn't even know at the time of uh, 1971, to be honest. Uh, which I discovered later, but even if I had known, I would never have communicated to her, to her. and um, I never published them. So I consider uh, my personal view for discussion, uh, essential. <clears throat> so there are a number of problems when you have, when you have this type of modular kind of nonlinear theory. The, the, um, the, the first problem, the first one, we have to look at, uh, at the classical origin of the theory question. Is there a variational principle that can can we assume as the foundation eventually of the of the of the nonlinear theory? The answer is yes. You have to change the the, the action and it's a the tilde here, and you have to change the Hamiltonian. You have to add the psi, the psi in the Hamiltonian. If you do that, of course, you, everything is nice and works. But one moment, this is now say my classical theory is no longer <clears throat> no longer purely classical. And, and if you see it from a quantum mechanical viewpoint, you don't only have a quantum mechanical, but you have also in, in some roots that will remain. But once you, once you assume this, then of course you have the hamilton jacobi equation, yes, but with respect to a, to a tilde. And, uh, but then there are, there are, there are, there are, there are issues because of, you see here, the, you, when you map, the, you map this action, uh, this action, action is then mapped to the, to the, to, the, to the log, which is at the foundation of the Schrodinger equation, then um, then um, then there are doubts because of the, the because of the, the because the um, because of the nonlinearity which are embedded in uh, in, the, in the Hamiltonian itself. Also, when you try you, you try to pass from this expression here to the equivalent Heisenberg representation, then you really hit the wall. You hit the wall. I did hit the wall. Because the only way that I could do it via a non-unitary transformation, ladies and gentlemen, I, I strongly uh, is my my strong view uh, because I I, I hit my nose for years on this. Any non-unitary image of quantum mechanics cannot be called quantum mechanics. This is my view. It's very interesting, very valuable, but you have to be careful because the implications are very serious. 
is a completion of quantum mechanics in our, in our language. Now, um, to illustrate uh, the non-trivial implications, we have to consider the von Neumann theorem essentially self joiners Those are the very essence for observability. Ladies and gentlemen, when you have this type of uh, nonlinear theory, I, I find so. I'm not a mathematician, so I cannot claim that what I'm stating is correct. No, and if you say, Ruggiero, you are wrong, I will say, thank you, thank you. You remove something in my soul. But um, th there are doubts as so ever uh, an observable. A, a quantity in this theory is truly an observable. I have to see <clears throat> the proof of, the proof of, um, of a von Neumann theory of an essential self adjointness for, uh, for a nonlinear theory. I have not seen it. But this is only some of the, the, the issues. There are others. There are other, other issues. Here is, for instance, sure, of course, what is the linear moment? Okay, they can say, oh, this is the linear momentum in this nonlinear uh, non theory. Well, well, no, stop, stop there. Because then the, this assumption that uh, this makes the assumption that um, the, the the, the, this the, the, um, the, 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 this uh, the, the makes that this partial derivative is equal to is equal to the linear momentum. Okay, out of which then you get an ordinary version of the quantum moment. But um, but if you if you assume you believe in Bohm and you assume that uh, the wave function may have some content of velocity of the particle, one moment that stop everything. This is not equal and zero. There is a nonlinear contribution. This is this is as we will see. This is an isolinear expression. So it's not a truly linear. So conclusion, the, the very definition of the linear momentum and operator is, is in question. And, but then the, the Laplacian is in question. But then you go to the, the, you go to the uncertainty themselves. The uncertainty, you have a semi-classical theory. So the uncertainty becomes weaker. Notice this is not a criticism, not at all. This is the foundation of what I have call, you know, the progressive recovery of Einstein determinism depending on the, the strength of the strong interaction. So it's not a criticism. No, it's only a, a, only a point. Those insufficiencies are insufficiency with respect to quantum mechanics, not with respect to hadronic mechanics. No, those are the foundations of hadronic mechanics. So in any, anything that the Eisenberg did is magnificent in my view. He did the best he could at this, at this time. And then, and then, Science advances by step one, one after the other. Okay, so so <clears throat> when finally I stopped teaching and I went to Harvard um, uh, on arrival, on arrival on September um, uh, eight, the day after arrival actually, the uh, the the officer, the, 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 the Dr. Peasley of the year, he called. Uh, um, uh, called um, one that that he, uh, he, I was invited to apply for. Uh, for a grant uh, from um, the Department of Energy in view of my, my studies at the, uh, when I graduated on the, on the irreversibility, the study of irreversibility, see whether they had an impact on, on nuclear fusion or new, uh, new, new energy. Our George was shocked, he was next to me. <laughs> I understand later, he, he opened his mouth and didn't talk about And I said, then I said, Howard, what happened? I said, what happened? Something wrong, no, no. This is our David Paisley from the DOE inviting you to Harvard University to apply for a grant, which I did. A grant <clears throat> I remained for all the years that all my study at Harvard were supported. When I left Harvard, the grant remained with me. It was administered, instead of being administered by Harvard, was administered by uh, the IBR. And, um, and everything I did was due to the Department of Energy. So, uh, so thanks, the Department of Energy. Thank you for that grant. Because that allowed the funding is many many inter international meetings supported many scientists. So oh, it was um, incredible. Even jointly <clears throat> at that time, I had an just for the record, I had an invitation. I had an invitation from Springer to write two monographs, not of review, no, of original content. So this I want to mention this because um, I left Harvard eventually. I, because I, I want, you want to know, I am, but I'm, honestly, I've never been, a, uh, my, the aim of my life has not been an academic career. I am interested in knowledge, in scientific research, in freedom of free thinking of scientific research. I think the fact that I am associated with Harvard is having those uh, originating um, condition, I think is, is an evidence of, of my commitment to knowledge, despite whatever price personally I have to pay. Besides America is unbelievable, there's infinite possibility besides that of Harvard. 
there are many other many other structures that it has to, to support. Well, well, let's go to the point. So, uh, so on arrival, I, I started work feverish. We're talking about September 77. And in early 78, finally, I found the solution. The solution is what now you know. And um, which, however, is uh, divided now in three levels, 78, uh, 93, and 96. <clears throat> so it's very important if you read the original papers. This is the, my, the original paper published in 78. At the Drawing Journal, incidentally, if you were there, the Drawing Journal was founded by Howard George and myself. And Howard George was the primary editor, he remained the primary, primary of the Lyman Laboratory. He's still there. Uh, Howard is still there at the Lyman Laboratory. He remained the chief editor. For, um, and he liked this paper, not so called Stephen Economy. And or Stephen uh, Weinberg had some criticism, but uh, Howard no, didn't like it. And so the paper was published, a 200 page paper. <clears throat> and so the, basically, the, the, you know, is that basically you have a, 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 a linear algebra of operators in the coordinate product and, uh, and the units one. You do the lifting of the product, the completion, if you want, with the isotopic element is assumed positive definite. T is arbitrary functional dependent. With this one, now careful when you read this original paper that this is defined on conventional numeric field. Conventional numeric field. That, that what I knew at that time. But what this, this was sufficient to prove that indeed, when, you, when, the, when the modular action is transformed in an isomodular form, is written here, namely the action of the Hamiltonian on the state of the Hilbert space is through sandwich through an, an axio, associativity preserving, but, but the broader the notion of a product, then this is isomodular. When you have this type of nonlinear structure in which all, here's the key words, all, Nonlinear terms in the wave function are embedded at the time in the isotopic element. If they are all embedded in the isotopic element, if and only if you have this crucial property, so they are hidden, hidden in the star, then and only then the, the theory verifies the superposition principle. But, but, careful, <laughs> there is a caveat here, has to be clarified. Remember my insistence that uh, whenever, you have, when all, whenever you assume this isotopic problem, you got to use it everywhere. Otherwise, you may end up with inconsistencies that usually remains hidden for people who are not, uh, have not done actual, actual research in the field, which is insidious because, oh, somebody's convinced well, this, this makes no sense. But they make no sense because we do is a minestron and you are mixing. Conventional mathematics with isomathematics, conventional product with isoproduct. You know, no, this is not totally nonsense, mathematically, non physics. So the caveat here is the star. Namely, sure, you have the, 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 the superposition principle, but the, the wave functions are multiplied isotopically. Be careful, because it cannot be multiplied, cannot be modified conventionally. And uh, if you multiply conventionally, it, makes, it will make no sense, because you don't, we don't know the. the we don't know the symmetry of the wave function uh, uh, under uh, this highly nonlinear theory, but we know them under the isolinear. So even if you do it, it makes no make will make no sense. Okay, so but this <clears throat> this theory tonight. Oh, incidentally, another point: if you inspect this paper, a section uh, I call a table rather than section. This was the terminology used by Springer a lot at that time. It's a table three seven from page on. <clears throat> this uh, universal isolated. Uh, um, the, 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 the whole theory is developed for non associative algebra. The product of those operators the, was uh, uh, assumed to be generally non associative. So, the all uh, several pages of so several diagrams, invertible diagrams, and so on, they are all for under an uh, 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 the lifting of a non associative algebra. Now, I did this for, because for me, there is known that associative algebra is a, part, a trivial particular case of non associative. So that's why I want to develop. The may, may I ask one, one question? Uh, may I ask one question? Mm -hmm. uh, the psi, your, 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 your psi function, is that just a, a complex number or a column vector of complex numbers? Exactly. What is psi? At this moment, uh, there's an excellent question. Professor Sobzik, I'm hoping to pronounce your name 
pro, pro, properly. Otherwise, I would be sad. Um, uh, Professor Sotwick, the, the, at this stage, stage the, the, the phi is, a, is a, the wave function, uh, the wave function is, an, um, is an ISO state of the, uh, of the basic Hilbert space. With no specification, we cannot introduce specification because we don't know the energy, we don't know the potential, we don't know the nonlinearity which is wanted. So, so it mainly is the, the is the amplitude that uh, that, um, the, the, the both functional dependent characterize a nonlinear theory. So, what it is specifically is best to leave it undefined because, although at least. The, um, sufficiently broadly defined. Well, is the as a state of the uh, Hilbert spaces enough for us? Does this answer your question, please? Uh, for example, in your verification of ISO superposition principle, you're multiplying them together. So, you know, if they're not complex numbers, or what, I'm not sure how that multiplication is defined, depending upon uh, what it is, of course. Uh, that, yeah, verification of ISO superposition principle. You have big psi is equal to the product of the of the uh, psi k's for one two. The isoproduct is this isoproduct? Yes. Yeah. Well, so so yeah. psi k are, are just complex numbers times the iso unit. Is that what it is? Or yeah, I'm well, just a little confused. Oh no! Well, your reason is not. Perhaps one one notational issue is that. You didn't write psi with a hat in that uh, equation. It is hat. Uh, it is hat, as you will see. That uh, the convention of the nonlinear theory is the hat uh, of this theory here. Where is it? Is this hat here? Is the solution of the uh, of this class? This is a class of the uh, of the nonlinear theory we are considering, with an arbitrary functional dependent on psi. It is the nonlinear psi is here uh, as an I. I should state, but also in the part of this is basically is the psi. So what it is uh, uh, to this uh, now the first question I, uh, raised by Dr. Subzik, which is a very good question, is is it a real uh, or no, generally complex? So so the next question, which is also raised by Dr. Subzik, is the is I'm sorry. Uh, is uh, how about the, the ISO unit? What is the well? But the subject, you are indeed a, a, a very powerful mathematician because you, you touch your, your intuition, you see that uh, for, formulated up to here, it, 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 there are problems. There are problems because you, you say yourself, what is the unit? What is the unit? I have this new problem. What is the unit of this multiplicative unit of this problem? How can I define this enveloping, this universal enveloping as a social divide? But still, remember, it's still defined with number one. The number one is not the unit of the ISO, uh, ISO product. So um, this tells you the, the mandatory need for formulating mathematical and, and physical consistent, the mandatory need of formulating this, this theory on the ISO number. Without the ISO number and everything I've said and everything I will ever say, will make no physical sense and often no mathematical sense. The moment you formulate this, this um, universal envelopment, positive algebra, all the field, oh yes, everything, everything square, because, because then even the complex character of psi is gone, uh, uh, that a subject, because, it, because it's contained in the ISO unit. We don't, there is no need to specify the ISO unit is a real value of complex value. As you know, that provided is invertible, as no, as no, no, no others, there, there is no other requirement. Totally free. So, so, so you remove the, the, the need to, to identify the moment you define over an ISO unit, but then you have the consistent. But even after this, this formulation over ISO unit turned out to be incomplete. You will see it in a moment in some concrete cases. It had to be a, the, because the, you, we remain with a non locality. This is non-linearity, but the non-linearity was okay. But then the non-linearity, <clears throat> I could the, the, a non-linear equation formulated with um, a, a conventional uh, Laplace made no sense for this theory, no sense whatsoever. Because uh, how, how can this theory consistently and uh, 
interaction over a volume, the mutual penetration of those hyperdense particles, one, one inside, you cannot do it. So it was mandatory to, to inspect the Newton library and do the, the, the isotopic lifting that we did in, uh, in the second, uh, in the second uh, lecture. <clears throat> and um, which I will discuss it in a moment. And then, um, and then finally, oh, incidentally here with um, the, the um, uh, here I want to see the, just a moment, um, let me see if I, I apologize for that. But, um, but you see here, you see here, and then you see here, here, already here the formulation has changed because now the, 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 the so the, now the, instead of psi becomes psi hat. And the coordinates and how then uh, still remains coordinate here. But then you go after two, after the isophere, not only is a psi hat, but then you need necessarily the iso coordinates. And then um, otherwise you have inconsistency, which means now the R represents volume. And, uh, and, uh, and <clears throat> but then, then it was impossible, it was impossible to, to to treat um, the, the, this equation with uh, Newton Leibniz differential calculus. In, uh, sorry, I, I, I spent years trying to do this uh, because of uh, my respect. You know, I, I was afraid even to touch the Newton. But out of desperation, I was at the, at the Joint Institute of Research in Dubna. Out of desperation, I, I, I had to uh, confront this problem. And um, so this is, and then of course the the, the, the class of um, unitary equivalence. In this case, iso unitary equivalence. Any non unitary theory, non unitary, can be reduced to an iso unitary, which verify the axiom of unitarity, iso unitary, iso liber space or iso field. And we believe that all generalization um, of quantum completion, extension of quantum mechanics, that uh, that. Uh, that exit uh, that can be represented as non-unitary transformation of quantum mechanics are particular cases of hadronic mechanics. There are theorems of universality. There is a theorem of universality for iso for closed system with conserved total energy, and there is a theorem of universality of readmissible algebra which include all possible. All art understood by mathematics was proven during my, my PhD thesis. So this includes this conclusion. The, the, it is my opinion that, uh, in my opinion that uh, the that um, as you will see the the, the, the study, the fundamental studies by by Eisenberg, of course, they were indeed, uh, and uh, and of course uh, by Bohm, they are indeed. <clears throat> Just look at them. I I I I, I selected them. Uh, not to treat um, jointly with the nonlinearity, not to treat uh, also the bomb, um, the liberally bomb theory, because it uh, closely related to my, uh, my, my verification of Einstein proof and should be treated jointly because <clears throat> they are deeply, deeply related. Uh, they are semi classical, so they recover, partially they recover um, the Einstein determinants. That's exactly what I have studied. So they are, they are at the foundation of my studies. Also, look at the very, very first um, equation by the by Deborah Lee Bohm, and then you see the mass uh, Newton at the Newtonian level. It's a mass multiplied by the acceleration, and then it's equal to what? It, the the, the right inside is um, is a variationally non self joint uh, force. It's a force non derivable from the potential. That's precisely the, the fundamental point here, and this is my, you can check this with the condition of variational self joint uh, in my first volume of, with Spring of Luck. You can clearly see the uh, variation in non self joint, but that are non potential. Then, you, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot uh, add them to a, to a potential because then this means you can interpret them as a potential. Then you have you have difficulty. While if you represent with um, uh, with isotopic element, then you first of all you recover the superposition principle. Then you preserve you preserve the axiom of quantum, and then you, you have other other beauty. So. Um, uh, is a reform identical formulation that I believe should be considered. Well, those are two transparency very quickly, which I presented uh, at my um, second lecture, but let's do very, very quickly. This is the ISO uh, variational principle in which the non self adjoint interactions are now not embedded in the Hamiltonian. No, not the rather, they are embedded in the differential calculus. Then you read this is written explicit or more explicit like this. You have, this action is written like this. Plus there is an extra term, 
the Newton's equation, which are precisely non uh, represent variation in one self adjoint. So you do have now Hamilton Yarkov equation, but with respect to a, the, this new, um, um, a new action, a, a with a hat, and above all, most importantly, there is now an, um, in the preceding version, there was an ordinary partial derivative that created all the problems on, um, on uh, uh, observability of such as self joint. Here, no, there is a nice differential calculus. And so I can assure you that this is exact, namely this partial, isopartial derivative is indeed equal to the, to the linear momentum period because the nonlinearity is embedded in the derivative. That's the reason why it is, it is performed. Far, far from that, you know, the mapping of the ISO action into, uh, is very simple you know, with the log of a, of a psi hat, the careful of the psi hat. And then the derivation of um, the derivation of the fundamental Schrodinger equation of quantum mechanics, of Adamoy mechanics, uh, very easy to derive from this equation. Yeah. Can I ask one question about the, the last equation? Uh, uh, Please. Is that just a, is that a typo uh, that that you don't write the hat over the t? In the last equation. Well, it could be very well with my eyes. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Page. Um, yeah, I think this equation or this equation here. Is this? Yeah, no, the last one. This one. Yeah, yeah you have just the uh, the the derivative on the left hand side. But this is a nice derivative. You see the hat. Yeah, but you didn't write hat over the t. Oh yes, the, no. This is this is intentional. Thank you for asking. You see, any question, any question. Uh, thank you, thank you. To to emphasize the fact that a, the fact that is redundant in in at this level, adds in another additional enormous degrees of in other words, the isotopy of time. It's an extremely complex um, topic. Uh, I, at this yes, that, that was my, my second question, but um, so in the equation for the iso Hamiltonian Jacobi equation, uh, you write uh, the T with a hat. Yes, this is, this is an excellent correction. The, 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 um, this means, you know, technically this should be written with a, with a hat in the T. And then later in practical cases, uh, maybe we can. Uh, I agree with you, Dr. Dr. Page. Thank you for raising the issue. To, <clears throat> to be rigorous, this has to be the, the hat. But it adds an enormous, uh, there is an additional isotopy. You need an additional, uh, additional uh, degree of freedom that, um, that, um, that one is, if I can. Uh, well, for, well, for the, the intuition that you associate with our hat, is is a volume mm -hmm. yes so i wonder what intuition do you associate with t hat it is a very complex <clears throat> a very complex issue do, do this uh, thanks for raising it uh, it tells you the complexity of the, the of these things that we are discussing as well as the non solved problems there is plenty for everybody first of all <clears throat> we have to remember that there are four directions of time not only two because there is <clears throat> motion forward in future time and then motion forward in back time. That's, that's, a, that's what, what you see around. And, uh, and then, but then there is motion backward from fusion time and motion backward in back times. The need of those four times <clears throat> and it's been proven in, in, in our study in biology, in uh, this jointly with the biologist Hilda uh, from uh, Australia, that if you cut uh, if you cut a, a, a seashell and you look at um, the bifurcation, you can see the construction of the four lobes, and it has been proven mathematically that the seashell could not possibly construct the bifurcation so precisely unless you know all four direction of time. This gives you the idea of the complexity. <laughs> and what was going on. Okay, can, can you write down, given, okay, just ordinary time t, what is t hat equal to then? If t, if t is just ordinary real number, what is t hat? Is that is that t times the iso unit? Is t hat equal to, ISO unit times T, is that what is equal to, or I'm not, you know. 
normally, normally, in the, there is an is an open question and the, the, not the, the subject. And an open question, one of the many open problems that are available to any curious person. Normally, what we do, we incorporate a, a color with a coordinate, we represent the coordinate with a ball, with the iso unit. And with iso time, we represent an interval that includes, careful however, that includes all four direction of time. Otherwise, we don't represent the difference. But in, um, in particle physics, this is, by, this is a problem way far. So that's why. That's why uh, this uh, unconscious mistake of abandoning the hat and going. Okay, because you write the ISO time as a matrix, express it as in terms of a matrix, then I could translate it into a geometric algebra expression. <laughs> total, the, the total degree of freedom you can absolutely, because then remember, R is a point and T is a point. T is a point in time, R is a point in space. R hat is a volume. And that's the same can be only with volume. We don't know how to use all the rest out of the uh, out of the, uh, the section of this volume of in time. But and um, the um, the what? If you give me the matrix, I can write down the geometric number for it. <laughs> I love to discuss it with you. I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Thank you for your sharp memory. This is an unconscious because unconsciously, when I watch physics, I don't want to use the hand. But when you look at our works in bi biology, oh my God, see the thing, he had this all the time. Incidentally, <clears throat> uh, Dr. Hilbert was the first uh, to prove, uh, we're talking, I'm talking about, uh, the, 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 I mentioned one point, I, I was, I'm trying to stimulate your imagination uh, as much as I can. I made a point, in, in, uh, let me try it again, that, um, and I have taking time. But that when there are open, uh, open physical, chemical, or biological problems, <clears throat> this means that the mathematics that has been used is generally insufficient. And I add that, that often the mathematics needed for the solution is missing, is not there. And so it has to be developed, has to be searched. Um, now, in this case, the mathematics was there. Basically, what um, uh, uh, Dr. Hilbert did, he is one of the most famous conchologists that I know, the uh, study of, uh, of shells. The, um, what he did, is <clears throat> essentially, he, he re recovered Fourier description of a beautiful description of seashells that Fourier transformed. It's very, very uh, beautiful job. Conclusion, <clears throat> his conclusion was that the Euclidean space can indeed represent, we can, in an Euclidean space, we can represent any, any and all possible uh, shells, forms of sea shells. Very well. And then, and then, <clears throat> and then this is not biology. This is a, this is a, <laughs> this is a Polaroid picture of biology. But then um, <clears throat> bi biology means, uh, means irreversibility, it means um, you start something and then something leaves and then dies. So you need irreversibility in an absolutely mandatory way. In physics, we do it without. In biology, forget about you, you, you do mambo chop. But, but so what he did, he, he represented with the computer, he represented the crop of seashells with also with the with, with, um, with Euclidean space. And the view is fantastic because you see the, the seashells, the, the physical reality and the biological reality grow smoothly with this fantastic bifurcation and so on. Then it, it grows the form, it grows out of a bunch and then it cracks, and then it cracks, <clears throat> proving that uh, the, the Euclidean geometry <clears throat> and all Euclidean uh, geometry that are equivalent to the Euclidean geometry are structurally unable to represent the reversibility of a biological structure. What he proved uh, was, a, uh, was his discovery, not mine. The, uh, I learned about it and I jumped at it. The, um, uh, what he proved that by doubling, by doubling the axis of the Euclidean space. So um, the, uh, the x axis uh, uh, had two values. The y axis has two values, and the x axis has two values. So, um, so he proved by the doubling this um, axis, then he could correctly represent the growth of at least a simple, simple seashell, not a very complex structure, but at least a simple shell. I immediately jumped at it and we wrote together a book because the, the, this was, <clears throat> this proves the multi value. 
character or the mathematics needed for uh, needed for uh, to study biological structure because if you have two multiply by three you, two multiply by three is six forget about it. you don't I don't think you can do anything uh, you do mathematics physics beautiful physics and mathematics and some chemistry but not biology in this case um, in the case of Hilder, two multiply by three will give you two results because the unit in this case was uh, two value the unit uh, iso unit and, and then there were other, um, other um, so back to so we are entering problem of the, in going from T hat from T to T hat we enter into complexity <laughs> unbelievable complexity. Oh, that we, sounds like a, a double number actually, like a, a, like an ordered pair. You want to replace a real number by two, two copies of the number. So that would that's we do that in geometric algebra all the time actually in one way or another. So maybe we could get the geometric interpretation of these ideas clear, more clearly. If you have, but the way that you, that you, then you have to represent the irreversibility. Then usually those structures, they are irreversible. So again, you represent the shape of, the shape very well of a, <coughs> of a biological structure. But the, the, the dynamical evolution, which is crucial for biology, no. Not only that, you have to represent, the, 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 the biology the represents biological the problem in representing quantitatively biological structure are enormous because first of all look at my hand so I don't know if you can see it you see you have to represent this you see this is a biological the, main, the first feature of a biological structure that's deformability you see all the physics that you can find go to a library PhD library and, and, and over the book any book that old book then is incompatible with this. Because they are all um, uh, crystal, yes, but not. Um, and uh, th this is also the chemistry, the entire chemistry available. Those are at the edge of um, this, this research. Yeah. So first you represent. Yeah, you need a theory that's compatible with the deformation, but then <clears throat> then then you need multi-value, as you correctly says. And this um, everything you say can be expressed in a multi-value form with very intriguing application. And then no, that's not enough. You have to represent irreversibility. That's it. That we the only thing that we could do it by a non-associative, uh, non-associative jointly Li admissible and and uh, and Jordan admissible algebras, but express it with um, hyperstructure. In other words, you, you, the, 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 with Hilbert, the old uh, all expression are conventional operation. Equal is a conventional equal. Bigger includes all these conventional operation but I, it has to be lifted to the hyper operation to, to really more it's very very interesting and, uh, uh, we have a uh, professor Roger Cleese a member of our group is the most famous mathematician in hyperstructure you will be delighted to the deliver a talk to, to, to this uh, if you are interested will deliver the talk he's the master also the admissible or admissible hyperstructure and uh, application to biology but those things are not only my mathematical, I have no words to say in my personal opinion. I'm not only mathematical exercise, no, because this, this can provide in due time a quantitative representation of, of life, the difference between the inorganic and the organic molecule. That's what we are talking about quantitatively. And then uh, and this may help dramatically to, from a medical viewpoint in the future, next generation, maybe 100 years from now. Um, like in, in the interest of um, completing the the, the uh, session, um, perhaps we can put the questions, these larger questions, aside for a moment. Uh, sure. Revisit them at the, at another another meeting. Thank you, Dr. Page, because I think so exciting for me. I lose sense of time, so I apologize. Okay, this is the structure of Adroni mechanics. I presented quickly, <clears throat> dear colleague. I have, I, have, I don't I have to be a soon. Let me remember this is what's called Nung, um, uh, Hilbert Nung Santilli isospace. This I um, the, this in the product. This keep in mind this is iso, uh, like a value. That, and then this is an observable sandwich in between uh, with the two two isotopic elements. The essential self joiners is identical to the conventional one. So yes. Yes, it works. I uh, I bet my my honor on this. And then we have finally what we searched for over a decade, 
the, the, the correct um, the representation of the linear the momentum with the ISO derivative with respect to ISO coordinates. And here is written with ISO unit. After that, uh, this is the ISO shredding. And here is now the image through an ISO unitary transform. You go to, to my um, isotopic completion of uh, Heisenberg equation. I, I have only one comment. This is the origin of um, uh, uh, Professor Heisenberg. Um, um, uh, limitation of his study. The basic limitation on his studies is that the, his studies ultimately uh, remain, since he used the Hamiltonian, his study remain ultimately funded on Lie algebra. Lie algebra are known to be a linear, strictly linear. So with a linear Lie algebra theory, he could not, uh, could not make it. That's why when I wrote uh, the, the Arrive at half uh, after I discovering that indeed we have the superposition principle. I dedicated the total my total my time, <clears throat> total priority to, to do the isotopy of the algebra. Here you see the product because they, uh, which is called the, the isotopy of the product. This is here because now <clears throat> on the isotopy the Lee <clears throat> Lee the Lee action remains the same, but the Lee theory acquires the capability of describing nonlinear interaction. They are embedded in the isotopic element, both at the algebraic level. This is just a first order form of the uh, isogroup that sometimes called least until the isogroup. Thank you. I don't, I don't think I can deserve such an order. But you see, this is the iso product, this is an iso unitary transform, which you can write it in this way is a non unitary transform. This is basically the, those are the very essence of it. Now, <clears throat> let me quickly, uh, very quickly, uh, outline and uh, non technically, this is highly non technical. I beg you because, um, sorry, uh, highly non technical. <clears throat> the notion of isolinear algebra or an isolinear vector space, if you want, isolinear isovector isospace, is basically it's essentially uh, it's a set of uh, AR, BR operators. <clears throat> now, this isolinear algebra over an isofield is a set of. of I, uh, of, um, uh, of, of operators equipped with this isotopic product you already know and this iso unit. And once you have this as this structure, then you can easily verify that you verify all axiom of linearity, but of course in the iso space. So this is the notion of um, an isolinear algebra. It's crucial <clears throat> for all our practical applications, all of them, to get numbers. This is crucial. Without this, we don't get cons consistently a new. So um, first of all, you have the work, you have the, the multiplicative ratio unit, and you have the associativity with respect to the product of operator, product of scale, and then of course, everything else concerning the sum. So, um, so, so in conclusion, the, the, this formulation reconstructs linearity on lyso space over isosphere, which we call isolinearity. It's a fundamental notion of uh, everything that we do for practical application. This theorem um, on, uh, on our elements of hadronic mechanics is perhaps the most fundamental. Uh, simply states that um, uh, uh, Hilbert, Nung, Santilli isospaces over isofield are isolinear. Namely, at the abstract level, they coincide with conventional Hilbert space. You can treat them with the same notation of the Hilbert space, identical. Only the, 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 the meaning of the symbols are different. You write the product AB in the Hilbert space. This is a conventional associated product. You reinterpret this as iso product, but that's it. you can use the same symbol of here, the space. So the, um, this is crucial for consistency because the, this assures us that the ironic mechanics is indeed a consistent theory. Let me close. This is my, my close, uh, closing, um, uh, closing, um, closing transparency. Let me <clears throat> show you how we reformulate nonlinear theory in the isotopic form so as to the whole. And eventually, unless somebody discovered some inconsistent, we don't know so far, but if somebody finds some inconsistency, please beg you let me know because, because there's a lot of stake on this thing. So this is the, the, the class of nonlinear modular nonlinear theory that we consider. This is written explicit, Hamiltonian, uh, conventional Hamiltonian, H0, plus an arbitrary term depending on the wave function. We write this identically in the isolinear form, identically. Uh, the base, the <clears throat> this is the basis of, this is the point of, that uh, to elaborate the possibility that 
whether the problem I raised, whether the solution of an, of an isolinear equation are also solution of the ordinary non-linear non equation. Because if, if the answer is yes, this could help indeed the, the, the non-linear non theory. Uh, I need a mathematician, I cannot do it alone. I obviously, the, I posed the problem years ago and not, nobody was interested so far. The, but anyhow, so we write it identically like this. It's very easy to find the solution. This is the solution of the isotopic error. Now let's see the compatibility of the isodifferential calculus. Let's consider the iso, the, the complete isodifferential equation with the, the partial derivative with respect to, let me see what I wrote. Yeah, I use it. Are we still there? I, oh, I did not write the top of on time. It's not needed. Otherwise, we complicated the issue. So. <laughs> but it's not, I must admit, it's not, uh, not caution. It's not, uh, so this equation, which is the conventional Eisenberg equation for this class of it, is written <coughs> in this way. It's very easy to prove that, <coughs> that this now can be written by factorizing the ISO unit. You multiply the ISO unit to the right, it's very easy to prove that T is identical to here. So this tells you that the ISO derivative indeed is compatible with, um, as I indicated other times, uh, the only mechanics, um, ISO mechanics is a monolithic structure. If one piece is, is not, um, doesn't fit with the others, then, um, then uh, okay, so Dr. Page, those are, the, those are basically the, those are the way, you have two ways of writing a nonlinear equation in, uh, in an isolinear form. So we should find out some solution at the, at the linear, isolinear level <clears throat> and then project it in the ordinary Hilbert space and see whether that solution is a solution of the, of the original Eisenberg equation or any uh, other equation. That's basically the topic. Let me conclude by with this, um, with this, uh, this view. We do not use this class of equation because again, because they imply that, um, they imply that uh, that the, that, the, that, the, that the wave function are uh, that the nonlinearity is derived, derived from a potential. I cannot say it against everything I know. I know. So we write instead, <coughs> we write them at the topic. And also, number two, we don't, we write, we don't write them in this form. We write them in this, expo <coughs> in this exponential form, namely e to the minus, careful with the minus. And this is if I have the side divided by the to be much much smaller than one, and it usually is much smaller than one in all particular cases that we that we have considered. And then and then, and, and then and there is the technical reason for minus and minus very much smaller than one, bottom bottom reason. There is a technical reason the very uh, connected the very first uh, transparency I, uh, I presented today. Then you do the an expansion of the first term, you get an ICU, you, which is similar to this, but there is a big difference. Here is a plus, here is a minus. Oh my God, this is huge, huge difference. Because then you go to the equation and the, what, uh, what happens to the equation? There is a minus rather than a plus. Here at uh, this equation, you see a plus. What does it mean? Ladies and gentlemen, plus means function. Remember, we started considering two, two, uh, two body problems, strong, two, strong interacting two body problems. When you have, when you have propulsion, the, the, the proton and neutrons, they are right away, you have quantum mechanics, you have no linear interaction. So I'm on, we're only interested in attraction, and this requires a minus. And, <clears throat> and then the interaction has to be strong. And this is strong if and only if this quantity is infinitesimal, very, very small, than, smaller than one. And, uh, and, and that's the reason. Now, we use this mechanism. Use, uh, I use this mechanism. The first, uh, the first, uh, Dr. Page, this I'd love to re-elaborate with you, the, uh, Dr. Sobzik, uh, Dr. Cruz, I would love to re-elaborate with you because there's been no additional study. But we use this um, this uh, this formulation to achieve the first uh, the known uh, the known attraction. I have to emphasize attraction 
between the identical electrons of the valence bond. They are made up of molecules. Molecules together by electrons on each other. But ladies and gentlemen, electrons have the same charge. And they repel each other with an astronomical force. That's why quantum chemistry is considered to be incomplete. Although I did this in 1997 and 1998, it's published in, in, this, in this volume here, 2001. The, the, um, and uh, so, <clears throat> But then with, um, with, the, with the chemist Don Schillady of the Virginia Polytechnical Institute, we proved that the perturbation series, the uh, perturbation series, uh, based with, with, this, uh, with this, um, uh, this isotopic element applies to the numeric data of the, of the valence bonds. This uh, perturbation series allows the representation of um, all Characteristics, experimental data on the hydrogen and water molecule, all of them, the, the, um, in, in a way exact to the decimal, to the believe it or not, to the to larger decimal, decimal value, because you have you have um, you have a completely new iso. You have all products are sandwiched in between this quantity, which is infinitesimal. So this series converges extremely rapidly to the value of to the value that you want. So, um, so this, is, this is the theorem there. You can see that this model, that the uh, perturbative series that is conventionally, conventionally uh, divergent, the perturbation series is conventionally divergent, can always be um, uh, turned into an iso perturbation series. Or we can say there always exists an isotopic element that, uh, with, um, that converts that perturbation series into a strongly converted convergent form. This is not connected to the Dirac, uh, Dirac, um, Dirac uh, rejection of the divergence in quantum mechanics. I have one final point, as well, but hilarious. If, if you look at the original papers, as well as the review here, but the original paper with Tom Schiller, <clears throat> there is a lie. I have to confess there is a lie. You are friends, I have to tell you that. <clears throat> you might say, Ruggiero, you, you, you have to be scholar. Well, this is, uh, let me tell you why. <clears throat> Basically, in that paper, you read twice, there are two separate papers, one recovering all data of the hydrogen molecule and all, uh, all the other for the water molecule. And we stated that the isoperturbation series were, were, was converging 1,000 times faster than the well-established conventional quantum chemical perturbation series existing in the literature, 1,000 times faster. That was a lie. <laughs> Believe it or not, why so? Because the conversion in reality was much bigger, it was 10,000 pounds faster, or maybe more than that. So Don and I, I mean, we said, no, if we make this statement, the, the, the editor will reject for sure. As I had long, they rejected the paper. This guy claims 10,000 times a faster conversion. So, and then was, there were chemical papers, they were not mathematical papers. So the, so we, are, we, we reach an agreement to, to claim 1,000 faster, but you should know that this is not true. The, the series convert 1,000 times faster than the ocean. Thank you for your patience and... Uh... Okay, well... <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's a true fact indeed. <laughs> We had to, we had to, we, had, we were forced not to admit the truth because of the fear of a check. But 1,000, we agree on it, 1,000 is far, is good enough. Incidentally, <clears throat> I discussed this sometime, we have to review this, uh, Dr. Page, Dr. Cruz, and uh, Dr. Um, 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 uh, Topsic. Yeah, we have to review this because mm -hmm. I had, I visited uh, um, Paul Dirac, another, I, Another master of mine in 1981. He was dying and he retired there. And uh, indeed, he died soon thereafter. I visited him because he strongly opposed um, uh, the divergences in uh, divergences. In, in, uh, I, uh, I think Dr. Sotrick has uh, would like to say something. I mean, you, you just you described a, a formula uh, there. Yeah, yeah. I'll show you that formula again. I'm trying to relate the, uh, I don't know, maybe you can't see it well enough, but 
Let me go relating, or is it backwards? Or is that clear that formula A hat it's star the, B hat equals A B times the ISO unit? Does that make sense? Or is it backwards? No, no it looks clear. The, okay. the, the image looks clear to me, no problem. Okay, so I'm trying to relate. Well, but the object. Well, be careful, but the the the, 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 the this is uh, you have to clarify. Because if, if, if you, in, in general, if you introduce a new product in which the, the operator is outside, in other words, <clears> if, <throat> then there may be problems in, uh, because you violate the right scale and uh, the scalar law to characterize an algebra. That is the reason why the isotopic element is put in the middle. In other words, the correct version is on the left. The right version is mathematically questionable, very questionable from mathematical grounds. I mean, it's identical. I'm just, yeah, I'm just trying to relate the uh, the ISO product to the uh, not ISO products. Uh, so, so, so I should write I had a, a, so one equation should just be in the ordinary linear algebra, and the other one is in the ISO algebra. That's basically my idea. And in this way, if you define, if you define. Sorry, can you put it back again, please? All right. You see, if you define a hat as a multiplied by by <clears throat> by i and e multiplied b as b multiplied by i, this expression is mathematically correct, of course, it, um, because i here and uh, and the t here they cancel each other, and you remain with a b multiplied by i. So this is mathematically correct. Uh -huh. the, the insidious point is this that this characterizes an algebra as because it verifies all axiom for the algebra, including right and left, scalar, scalar law and other, and other rules. If you assume this as a product of an algebra, however, you, you don't even, this is, you have to be careful because this does not character, this is the importance of the, of the isotopy, you see, because you violate the right scalar law or left. You cannot, uh, you cannot say that this characterizes an algebra. In other words, you diffuse ordinary spaces or, or no, over ordinary field. You cannot consistently treat them. Well, for, for me, the question is, what, what's the meaning of I hat on the uh, right-hand side? Is, is I, I hat an element of the algebra in the same way that A and B without the hat are elements of that algebra? Well, uh, I think... <clears throat> So, Last no, that's right. so, so, that, so I, I want the uh, the right side of the equation to be in the ordinary algebra. So that's right. So, so I had in the case of, of this paper I have with Dr. Santilli is just e to the c times e3. Or you know, I can write it down. Actually. Yeah. So, so as long as that is commutative as long as long as what you're doing is a commutative multiplication then uh, i don't Maybe, see any problem yeah, I, I, but, i'll show you one more but in general it's here. not commutative right no no but i agree with you dr page yes i agree so so this operator that you write here e e phi e sub three uh is that no, that's in uh, that's in geometric algebra <laughs> So, so that's a Clifford element, right? Yeah, and they're all Clifford algebra. Instead so, of matrices, so the, I'm replacing matrices. So we have Clifford numbers. So, so we on. have to be careful when we do because the Clifford uh, multiplication is not uh, commutative, right? So that's so right. We want that's to be, right. It's, it, so it we want to exactly be careful. The same rules as matrix algebra. So, so we, we have to be careful. We have to be careful when we write the left or the right multiplication. Well, that's right. I, I wanted the uh, the right multiplication to be entirely in the Clifford al the normal Clifford algebra, and the left is in the ISO algebra, the but ISO Clifford algebras. Let me make one clarification. Then uh, um, the subsequent um, solution, the, uh, the, the representation of the ISO is a scalar. So, so where you can put it, the right, or the left, or in the middle, it makes no difference. So it's by the no. He he has an exponential of e three, so e sub three. So the exponential of e sub three is is a 
uh, no, uh, pair of yeah, vectors. Cosh, sort, right? cosh phi plus E3 times sinh phi. Yeah, so it's a scalar plus a vector in some general that's sense. Right, that's right. So I, I really think it would help to clarify these ideas if we keep that geometric interpretation up and down the line. I, I think it can add a lot to the theory to have the geometric interpretation. Oh, very, very. In other words, that's, that's really not saying anything more than anti-commutivity. A, B equals a minus B A is very basic to physics for electrons or one half spin particles. Are, are defined in terms of anti-commutivity, whereas bosons are defined in terms of commutivity. So, so how, what we use anti-commutivity for to represent space, for example, Clifford algebra, two vectors are anti-commutative if they're orthogonal to each other. So I think that's very important idea to connect it to physics and, and space actually. Yes. I agree, but this <clears throat> this uh, goes beyond our joint paper. You see, <clears throat> our in our joint paper, the Clifford geometric algebra is, is conventional, or, which means the product is the conventional associative product. Only the elements are new or given by the S of power, and that's why the, your um, your uh, your formulation is beautifully. The, 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 however, if you want to do, if you want to pass to the next level. Which is the isotopy of the of the Clifford geometric? That's the paper by the two colleagues from a mathematician from uh, from um, from uh, Brazil. Then uh, it's a beautiful project. That's what you are referring to. Yes, exactly. That's a different. Uh, you know, you're talking about a different uh, iso unit because then this unit then becomes an iso, the, then becomes a multiplicative iso unit. In your formulation, what you call uh, is the iso unit. Of the Pauli matrix is not the ISO, is not the unit of the. Um, this is a point uh, which is the last comment in our joint paper section two is clarified, namely is ISO, the is the unit um, e to the phi uh, sigma e is the, is the unit the multiplicative unit of the of the, of the Pauli matrix and not of the algebra and not of the algebra not of the algebra. That's why your formulation is consistent and then the. the, the for us to factorize is the factorization that you are you achieved that to factorize the isopauli uh, into pauli multiplied by this um, e to a. that's uh, that was uh, that is the application this is no connected with um, with uh, with an isotopic formulation of uh, no connection with the isotopic formulation of, of of the clifford algebra no this is next stage that i definitely yeah. Okay. Could I ask? Uh, I, I think we we uh, need to stop very soon, but I just want one perhaps um, uh, reference to be clarified. Uh, during your presentation, uh, Dr. Santilli, you made a specific reference to Heisenberg, to to a paper by Heisenberg. Um, it's at the bottom of one of the slides, and I, I just wanted to be sure that uh, I have that reference correctly. Yep, I will send you the copy of the. I will send you. Let me. Let me. Okay. Just let me take, it will take me one second to. to one second. Okay. Yes, if you could send a copy of the slides, uh, that would be fine. <coughs> I don't know if I can locate it. I'm not sure I can locate it. I just. Oh, this is not. No, unfortunately. Anyway, it, it, when, you, uh, when you have a chance, uh, if you could send a copy of your slides that you showed today, yes. um, that would serve the, my my interest. Yes. Oh, the, thanks for that. Let me clarify that is one of the many references uh, for nonlinear studies of Eisen, but there are several. And there is also a book that he was uh, was writing. I never know that uh, I never could find whether he actually published that book or not. And I knew that we are thinking about the copies of the draft that's it. Yeah. And also, you, in the quotation, uh, in this, by, 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 by submission to the memorial book, so I quoted there, that's what I for uh, I quote Nyan, Eisen, the linear theory and the founder of. Of the study and, 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 and,
Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I think uh, uh, your audio level sort of changed there, and it was difficult to hear what you were saying. But um, I think if you can send that to me, I, I would at least start with that, uh, with the understanding that that there were other papers in the same same subject by Eisenberg. And if you're okay with any additional uh, reference specific by Eisenberg, specifically for nonlinear theory, I will say thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I think uh, today we it's time, I think that we should uh, uh, call an end to our meeting. Um, uh, do you have any specific proposals for, for our meeting next week? I think what you propose is fantastic, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, well, uh, unless I uh, hear from someone else uh, on a specific subject they'd like to talk about, then um, maybe next week we, we would sort of uh, have a, an open discussion on various subjects, if that's... Uh... Yes, because I have uh, many questions uh, around uh, this uh, uh, presentation, then I like to... Uh, present this question the next uh, week. Uh, that, that'd yeah, be I, perfect. I, I'd like to see a, the definition of ISO, like a partial derivative with respect to T hat. You need to see a slide. Ex exactly what is it? I guess it, it is in one of those books, but what, what book is it in? The, the definition of a partial derivative with respect to R or with respect to T? In the, from partial derivative, uh, whether T or TX is the same thing. It's not, uh, because the, 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 is, is the partial derivative, uh, the isotope differential calculus is defined for an arbitrary arbitrary variable. So uh, there is no much difference in the isotope differential calculus. The difference is, however, in the physical interpretation. Either if you have time, which is our time, the time that we perceive, or the time of the universe, which is, my God, very complex. And, uh, Okay, well, let's let's reserve that discussion for <laughs> okay. for next week. Okay, okay. and and Jesus, uh, perhaps you could sort of begin uh, the discussion next week uh, with some questions. Uh, thank you thank you. Okay, okay, uh, that's right. That'd be good. Yeah. All right. Good. Okay. Good. I, I hope I hope you have a uh, a great week, and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you again next week. Same for you. Thanks for your patience of today. Appreciate it. Okay. So bye. <laughs> Thank bye you. Everyone. Bye. Bye. Uh... <laughs> Front